process of trying to make what I refer to as a clutch journal. So this is my one version of it. It's just two envelopes that have been back to back and I may have tucked there and then glued another envelope onto the front here so it's a flip out. And now I'm going to basically decoupage this napkin onto the outside cover to kind of give it a little bit of zhuzh. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm looking for... Got my Mod Podge. And I'm going to just slap a bunch of this on there. There's my brush. And uh, yeah, just Mod Podge the heck out of this. So that it's, it's a little bit more backbone, I think. But it's going to be really pretty because we're going to do, I think I'm going to like already maze this up. You know, using copious amounts of gesso. <laughs> We're just going to get fun with it. Just see what happens. I have this idea in my head as to how I really want this to look. And I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to follow the steps until we get there. Until I get the desired effect. Ah, keep sticking my fingers in it. Okay, so just lay that down. Okay. And then we can go over it again. I'm really thankful this stuff dries quickly <laughs> because you can use it in a video and it doesn't take forever. I mean, as long as you don't saturate everything, you just want to make sure you have a good coat on it. Stop sliding around. better. And they say I always go from the center out. I guess we'll just do that. Really should have put something down under this. Besides just my mat, which I need to get a bigger one. This thing is, I'm outgrowing it. And I need to redo my desk to fit a bigger one. Which I think would be an excellent idea. So I can protect this desk that my son bought me. Thank you, sweetheart. Because uh, I don't know what I'd do without the desk. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think I've been, I've got, I've gone through so many desks over just the last two years. It's just ridiculous. No bubbles. Why are you bubbling? Maybe I must miss that spot, maybe. Oh well. I could hit this with the heat gun and see how it comes out. See where we need some more. I'm just gonna tear this off the edges, you know. Yeah, not so much. There we go. You can see where it's already starting to dry. <laughs> That's a good thing. 
Okay. Come on, stay down. Get down there. Okay. Now we put this away. And hit it with the hit it with the heat tool. Be right back. Okay, well it does it's not completely dry in some places, but that's okay. Because uh we're going to be tearing a lot of that stuff off anyway, which I think I'll just start doing. Or we'll snip it off. Let's snip it off and get a cleaner edge. Once this is completely dry, we'll be able to like tear this off like that so it has a little bit of a torn edge. And if the white comes back through, it's not going to matter because we're going to ink up the edges anyway. And we're going to be adding, you know, a lot more stuff to this. Anyhow, so yeah, so we can just start tearing this edge. I just had a horrifying thought. I don't know if I have any white gesso. I know I have black gesso. I don't know if I have any white. So I'll have to check. But if we don't, if I don't have any, we can always use a little bit of white paint. That's, you know, because we're not going for to have a surface that things can super stick to. I mean, this things would stick to this already, so. It would, it's not going to matter. Yeah, this is how I want it to look. Here we go. Just wanted that little torn up edge. I want it to. I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to look very shabby, like it's been around for a really long time. And here's this one. Okay. How about you? There we go. I mean, even big gaps like that, that'll be fine. It shall be okay. All right. So if we bend that in half, that's what the front's gonna look like. And there's the back. So yeah, this is coming along nicely. And so you can tell because it's it's not gonna crack or anything. And we've reinforced the spine with the flap, with the flaps of these two envelopes. So it's it's pretty thick right there. I mean, I probably will put a piece of material down the center here just to really make sure that it's not going anywhere. But there's our front cover so far. So let me get rid of some of this garbage and clean this up a little bit. So, um, let me look for some gesso. I'll be right back. So I'm back and I found my gesso. But this is not what it's supposed to look like. So this is what happens when you don't use your gesso often enough. <laughs> it 
turns into one great big slimy glob of unusable mess. So, yeah. I don't think we're going to be using the gesso. We're going to be using white paint instead. So, yeah, this is going to the bin. Nasty. Live and learn, right? Rest in peace, Gesso. Yeah, I'm back. Got some white paint. This is just a little tube of white paint that I keep next to the desk. So, let's, uh, and this is almost completely dry. I mean, it's completely dry now, so. Come on. Now I know that my next step that I want to use, I am hoping will stick to this okay. So I was hoping to use the gesso, but when, you know, when things happen, you just gotta back up and punt. Water. And wipe off what's not wanted. And it kind of falls into the cracks, the paint does. Okay. So I'm going to hit that with the heat gun again. And then we'll move on to step three. Okay, that's all dry. So, <laughs> I'm gonna bring out lightweight spackling. And it is very lightweight. This little tub weighs practically nothing because what's inside almost looks like marshmallow fluff. But what we're gonna do with it, which will work perfectly for something that, you know, you wanna keep it lightweight. But what we're planning on doing is I'm using a stencil. Grab it. And a little stencil thing. I can find them. I can find the one I want to use. That's one of them. And this one. Basically roses and butterflies. So, I don't know if I use the butterflies or just the roses. I don't know. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Let's just use just the roses for starters because it's much larger Probably a little easier to position. Or the butterflies would actually be easier to position. Yeah, let's use the butterflies. So, to get this sucker open, it's not nearly as difficult as the gesso was, which took me like 15 minutes just to get into that tub. And we're just going to use a artist knife and hold this down and grab some of our spackling I 
I've used this for the front of a journal before and it came out so neat. But I didn't use a stencil that time. I used, um, I just pushed it around and made it look like rock. So. Ooh, we don't want any of that. Lift off all the extra. And then lift it straight up. Hmm. It didn't come out quite like I wanted. But again, that's the lack of gesso. Uh, if we used it, we're going to have to let this dry. Definitely going to have to let this dry. Let's put another one down here. Let's see if we can't come up with a little better. This stuff is actually really good for all types of stuff. But it's so fluffy. And it doesn't really... It's not like typical spackling paste. And it's definitely not meant for journaling. <laughs> it's meant for when you're putting new walls in. Once this dries, it's going to look really cool. I really do. I want to use this little one. I'm afraid of where, if I put it down someplace, I'll be touching one of the others. I don't want to get my own way. <laughs> well, maybe leave it at two. We'll put one on the back cover. Or should we? No, we'll leave all the raised stuff to the front because the back will be sitting on tables and stuff. It'll get knocked off more than likely. So best to stay like this. So, okie dokie. Let's put this away before it dries out. Because it doesn't take much to make that dry out. it is cool stuff and uh yeah i'll leave a link to it in uh the description box below and you can check it out it's uh i got it off of amazon so well, we just wanted to patch a little hole and i got this little great big thing and patch it and so yeah <laughs> and clean off that stencil And the craft knife, of course. It's already starting to dry. Just new. Okay. Now, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun one more time. Be right back. Okay, so this should be dry and pretty much on there now. Yeah, it seems like it is. So what I plan on doing now is embossing ink. And I'm just going to very lightly tap over these butterflies. 
with this embossing ink. Now this is all just experimentation. We're just seeing if this works. Seeing if you can do this. If you can emboss spackling paste. Because I don't own any of the, uh, oh, the, you know, the, what is that, mixed media stuff, medium paste, or what's it called? I can't remember what the heck it's called. But we are going to try this just to see. Grab a piece of paper. Our embossing powder. We'll reboot the butterflies. If this works, I'm going to be shocked. I really will be shocked. Oops, don't close it yet. Oh, looky there, looky there. Let me grab a paintbrush here and brush off all this excess that we don't want. You just gotta get into those little nooks and crannies and get that gold out of there. If it's someplace you don't want it, you just use a little paintbrush and just brush it away. And this gives you a little bit when you don't waste all your embossing powder. Too, you don't end up with the golden embossing powder where you don't want it. Okay, set that down, put this back in the bottle. Back over there, close this up. Okay, heat gun, one more time, round three. I'll be darned, it worked. Huh, it actually worked. Look at that. <laughs> That's amazing. Man. Pleasantly surprised. That looks really cool. I'm digging it. Okie dokie. And now we're just going to ink the edges of this paper here. Because we're going to be doing other stuff with this, and I don't want it to get, you know, too far along without my inking it. Because knowing me, I'll forget and be like, oh no, I forgot to ink it. And I'll already have lace and everything on it. And be like, that's not what I wanted. So 
See how it changes the look completely. Once we have this done, I will go back over it with the um, Mod Podge to make sure that those butterflies don't come off and don't start to flake or anything like that. We'll give them a nice coat. So, okay. There we go for that. This is getting there. It really is. It's looking really cool. <laughs> this is because it was sitting down on the mat where it got hot. And the ink transferred to the inside of the envelope. <laughs> That's going to get all collaged over anyway. Don't worry about that. But this looks cool. I am really happy with the way this looks. Okay. Let's see if we can't add some things to the front cover before we tackle anything else. Because we definitely want to, you know, kind of, we don't want the little flaky edges here. You want to make sure those are not there. Let's see. So far, so good, right? I mean, it's not Artie Mae's style, but which her stuff is just fabulous. I love her stuff. But let's see. What else can we do to this without completely destroying it? <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to pick some uh, some papers to use so that we can figure out, you know, for the inside as well. Because we're going to be covering, you know, these bits and pieces here. So we definitely want to pick out something that's, you know, kind of goes with the cover and kind of makes you think, oh, yeah, Paris. Um, let's see. Oh, get that out of there. These colors go nice. This is a, a background that I've made. We could use that on the inside covers. I think that would look nice to collage with and to collage over. We might just do that. Okay, well, now we have at least a little bit of an idea as to what we want to do and what we want to add into here. I'm going to definitely look through some of the kits that I've, I've uh, gotten offline and uh, we will back and finish some of this up and yeah I'm really kind of happy with the way this is looking already so until uh, my next video about this I will see you later love you bunches bye